Hello, today we're going to be looking at the WL Toys V262 UFO quadcopter. This is a very big unit. I got this unit as a gift and I thought that since it's so big and so different from all the other drones that I have that I thought I'd share it with you. So I'm looking at the box. We can see that it's got a, a styrofoam or a high density foam body. We've got several different accessories that we can purchase for it. The camera, the bubble blower, the rescue hook, the little projectile shooter, or even a little water gun. But as this comes, it does not include any of those, to my understanding. Um, even though it says HD camera on here, I don't believe there is actually a camera. Uh, nice looking controller with an LED uh, screen down here to give us some input on the, the flight characteristics and what's going on and it has a 360 degree unlimited inversion so let's flip this around so pretty much the same information back here slightly different view of the unit uh, and here it says that it's uh, 61.5 centimeters um, diagonally from corner to corner. Um, I'm figuring that this is pretty close to going to be about two feet um, along the edge. But uh, let's go ahead and open this up and let's see what we get. Alright, so it's packed with styrofoam. This is a very, very big unit. Still in the box, we have uh, an instruction manual. And when I was moving the box around a little bit, I heard something rattling around, and I think I just found what that is. So right down here, we've got the US adapter for the power cable. It looks like it might have been tied on very loosely with this twist tie and came loose during shipping. So, uh, hopefully it didn't bounce around too bad or do any damage, but at least from the initial appearance it looks okay. So, looks like a uh, vacuum formed shell on top. This is not a sticker. Flares out a little bit. Could have used a little trimming, but nothing major. Uh, it does appear to be fully assembled, ready to go. So, let's flip it around to what we see on the back side. Alright. So here we can see our power adapter. The back side of the controller, so we'll pull it out to the back. Um, oh, okay, so here's our battery charger. So the battery itself must be pre-installed in the drone. Okay. And then we're going to have some spare pots here. It's always nice when they include spares because you know, accidents happen. So let's put those down. Let's see if there's anything holding this in besides friction. Interesting. Looks like we have a little kickstand. I've not seen that before on a controller. Um, see how many batteries it takes. So we are going to need six AA batteries for this. Okay. Well, it's very close, but there's that kickstand. Oh, and it's up on the kickstand. That's what it looks like there. I guess it just keeps it from sitting flat on the ground. I don't know, I've never seen that before. That's interesting. Okay, uh, like we said, we've got six 
batteries needed for this, so we'll have to get that loaded up. The controls look fairly normal. This is a mode 2 controller, so this is going to be our altitude thrust up and down. Uh, because it is not centering back to home, I do not think this unit has automatic altitude hold. Um, those generally will be spring-loaded back to the center, but you can just release it and it'll hold its altitude. Uh, we'll figure that out once we go to fly. This direction will be for the yaw, or the rotation of the quadcopter, left to right. This will make it go forward, this will be backwards, and this will tilt it to the left, so it'll you know, go sideways to the left and sideways to the right. Got a power switch here. Um, trimmer switch for the left right yaw, trimmer switch for the um, drifting left, drifting right, and then for the forward and back. I generally don't have one for the altitude, so I'm going to have to look at the manual to see what that's for. And we've got apparently six buttons down here and two more buttons up here. Uh, again, I'm going to have to look at the manual and see what those are all about. We'll cover all that in the operations part of the video. So let's set that aside. Set these other pieces aside, give it some room. Go ahead and pull out the charger here. So the charger by default comes set up for European plugs. And that's why they gave us this little adapter. You kind of plug it in and it gives it a US plug. Um, it should work fine. I've never been a fan of these little add-on adapters, but that's just my personal opinion. I'd much prefer something that plugs directly into the wall as opposed to having this you know, two-part process, but uh, it is what it is. It should work just fine. All right. Let's see about getting this guy out of here. Put it here at an angle so it doesn't try and fall out. See, we got some tape holding it here. Looks like tape here. So let's remove those. See if anything else is holding this in. There's the first piece of tape. There's the second piece of tape, and it has lifted right out. So we'll get rid of the packing material and take a look at the drone itself. And here we'll look at the back side of it. Move in a little bit closer here. So the tape, they wrapped around the arm on this side, so let me get that off. And here we can see the battery. It's a snug fit. I have to see if there's a better way of removing it rather than just pulling it out. Um, I'd hate to think I'd have to remove all four of these screws every time I want to remove the battery. You really should remove them before you charge um, because the batteries do swell up a little bit when they charge and keeping them confined in the plastic case like that is not the best. So, uh, we can see we've got some thin metal arms here. Nice support for the, the motors. We've got some pretty good gearing. So, a small little pinion gear and a large gear attached to the propeller. And most of the electronics, or actually all the electronics, are contained kind of within this small little central part here. And then we have a little warning note here that says, please turn off the power switch and unplug the battery connector after use. So I'm guessing that there's a power switch on here somewhere. Um, I don't see it offhand, but I will look for it uh, for the operational part of the video. And then 
looking here at the motors, it looks like we have an LED light right here at each one. So that's going to give us our directional indications when it's up in the air and also allow us to do a little twilight flying. I'm not really supposed to fly at night, so I try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, but I do like to see what it looks like when it's, it's starting to get dark. So, um, this looks like the mount points for the various accessories, like the camera, the bubble blower, and then the, the power uh, adapters for it. Uh, and that might be what some of those buttons on the controller for would be to shoot the projectile, start and stop the, the bubbles, things like that. And we've got the, the main battery connector here. And look at that, we got white, red, and blue. So it, it, you know, it's looking for the controller, but obviously we don't have batteries in the controller. But I just like to make sure that you know, the battery's not completely dead and that the LED lights work. So it's a fairly lightweight quad because it is mostly foam. Uh, it does provide a nice circle of protection around the blades. So you know you can bump this into the house or you know a tree or whatever obstacle and as long as you don't break through the foam you know it's going to give a little bit uh, it should help protect the uh, the props quite well the only time you're going to risk the props is if you kind of get something that comes up through here and then impacts the blade in that manner so attached already is our landing gear I don't know how to show this without getting everything else in the background, but there we go. So we got our four feet for it to sit on the ground. Um, it's actually a little bit bigger than my display here. Let's see if I can drop this down a little bit. This is a good sized drone. I am looking forward to getting this up in the air. So I am going to read through the manual, figure out how to best remove the battery, and then get it uh, all charged up and ready to fly. And we'll do a quick overview on the features and all the buttons once I figure those out, and then get you some in-flight footage. Well, see you in a bit. Hello everyone, we're going to go over a few things before we get into the flight video. First I wanted to show you the manual. And this is where it mentions where the what the standard equipment is. And it shows the battery, the charger, the extra props, and the camera. However, a camera is not included with this package. So I thought that was a little interesting. Uh, it does look like the camera is optional. Uh, just like the other optional accessories like the bubble blower, the water gun, things like that. Okay. This quad uses a 7.4 volt 850 mAh battery. It uses this connector to actually connect to the quad to power it. And then it uses this connector which is a cell balancing connector with the charger to charge the two cells. Um, the battery does just slide in and out. It is a very snug fit. Um, I personally think it's a little too snug, but so far nothing's happened with it and I've had it up for two flights now. Um, you're going to see the first flight video in the next part of this segment. We're going to go over the controller real quick. So when we can turn it on, you can see 
So we've got this LED display down here at the bottom. Okay. So right now you can see that it's blinking it's in 40% mode. That's this button here. This button. We'll put it into 60%. Here we're in 80%. And now we're at 100%. And you'll see the effects all of these have on the drone in the flight video. 60, it doesn't really matter. This, when you push it, it doesn't do anything. When it was um, bound to the drone, I pushed it briefly and it would say function down here. Although nothing seemed to happen on the drone. If you press and hold it for two seconds, it puts the drone into headless mode. We can see here that we are in mode 2. I'm trying to get this to show up clearly on the camera for you. There we go, mode 2. Nothing in the manual mentions how to get it into mode 1, although mode 2 is what I prefer. Um, so this is going to be your throttle. So this is going to control up and down. This is going to control your yaw left and right. This is going to be your, what they call, crabbing left and right. And that's where the drone will tilt and then fly left and right. And then this will be forward and backwards. We've got our power switch here. This is our power indicator. Because there's no camera and no FPV video, there is no cell phone holder or anything else that attaches up here. This button here is going to be for our um, 360 degree roll. So you push the button, do the control stick in a particular direction, and that's the direction it's going to roll. This button up here is for the camera, which again is not included. Quick press takes a picture. Long press starts and stops the video. I assume this button will change depending on the accessory installed and some combination with this button down here. Uh, but those aren't really spelled out in this manual. Uh, hopefully they'd be spelled out a little bit better in the manual that comes with the, uh, the accessory when you buy it. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn this off for the moment. This, as I mentioned before, does take six batteries. And one of the reasons is because of that backlight that is always on. That is a, a fairly big uh, drain. I did push the light button uh, when it was flying. I don't remember what it did because uh, it was kind of hard to see those little LEDs in the daylight. And I have not yet taken this out at night to get, or twilight, to get a better idea of how it looks at night. That's something I hope to do soon. Um, but I want to go ahead and get kind of my first impressions of all this posted for you guys uh, in case anyone's interested in seeing it um, I have found it to be quite a lot of fun to fly so um, it is a big unit it does catch the wind very well because it is the lightweight styrofoam so I would be very careful trying to fly it in a um, breeze more than about four to five miles an hour. Uh, in the flight video you'll see I started off at about four miles an hour and then it jumped up to about eight miles an hour and you could tell that the wind was definitely getting to be too much for it. Alright, so enjoy the flight video. First flight of Cyclone. We're going to turn the transmitter on. We're going to plug in the battery. Let it sit for a few seconds. And we are now bound. It's a little breezy today.
I'm a little concerned about this one motor starting up slower than the others. It is a little breezier out here than I would prefer. Whoa! First big crash. Guffs up the props a little bit, but nothing appears broken. Oh, let's try this again. I just switched it to 60% to make it a little bit more responsive. So here it is in 40. And then in 60. You can see it leans more. And if I were to make it 100, look at how much it moves. So we're going to go back to 60. Make it a little bit more controllable until I get used to this unit. The breeze is picking up, starting to have an effect on it. You can see the grass in the background moving. So I might have to bring this in for the time being. Yeah, the uh, breeze is definitely getting too high now. So I'm going to have to shut it down for now. But that is the first flight of the WL Toys V262, also known as the Cyclone. Go ahead and unplug this.